The Valkyries in certain places, and they go, Pari Rube, Pari Rube, Pari. And it's tremendous the sound that they put, and the dust and the riders coming through. Just get the tape and just sit back and even enjoy the music. Hold it, David. Can I, can I have that again, that Pari Rube? Oh, no, 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 no. No, please, please. That was gone. Just one more. Extra money for singing. One more line, one more line. Extra money I'll for be singing. gone, go on. <laughs> Facts the race, David. Serious stuff, is it? Because here we are. That's your confirmed group there. Ballerini, Zanini. They came off home at Chamil, Molo, and Malaysia. And a right to uh, United Nations, it is there. A great gathering of the clans, a great cross section of the great uh, cycling nations, and it looks like they're waking up now. Yeah, it's interesting. I think what's happened in this stretch of cobbles is Ballerini started to spit it up because really he should be sitting back and, you know, but look at him. He's got his mouth open, he's really going hard. Zanini's behind him, he's got his mouth open. That means they're really taking in the oxygen there, and, and it looks like Chamil's trying to hang on as well. I think what Ballerini's trying to do is maybe, I don't think he should be doing it, he's trying to split this group up and actually chase. He shouldn't be chasing. There's no reason for him to chase, but saying that, look at the gap, he's opened up. But, you know, I'm always worried about Ballerini in these tactics. You know, he made mistakes before by two years ago when he towed um, Ducalus out to the finish. You know, obviously he's trying to think of a win here. He's going to split this group and chase. He shouldn't be doing it. But as we look, this is, this is, this is the remains of the Ballerini group. This is Eki Moff, this is uh, Francis Moreau, and this is um, Brian the Dane Brian Holmes. I'm not happy, I wouldn't be happy if I was a director, well, I don't know, but I'm not happy with the uh, the tactics of Ballerini. I think he should just be sitting back. But let's see what happens in this race. Well, the gap, uh, 1 minute and 38 seconds, I think it was the last time we saw it, so we'll see if he's going to try and uh, cross that gap on his own and get rid of the other two chaps at the moment. Ballerini, I'm sure, would still like to win this race again, but uh, he's absolutely happy. We've seen him do nothing for an awful long time. Now he's gone back and left Zanini on the front, with uh, with Chamil, so it's broken again, 152. So yes, they have in fact uh, drifted back a few seconds. So he did probably the right thing. The Ross also jumping around a bit, stopped the others getting together. Yeah, okay, the gap is nearly two minutes, but look, look, Ballerini starting to go through with these two again. Maybe he's going for fifth place or sixth place, but. You know, the, the race is not over yet. You know, these three, if we go back to the front group, you never know what's going to happen. Maybe, you know, something could happen to the bike, they could punch you, they could, you know, the, the man with the hammer could come out and hit their legs, you know? And they've got to watch out, because another group coming up behind, uh, Gaumont, Debian, uh, Magnin is coming up, and Le Marchand, uh, at 1 minute 30 seconds, so there's another group coming through. So perhaps bortolami has got uh, wind of the fact that there's more coming up and coming up, and uh, he probably has got to uh, split that little group up, so they're all in little subsections, because if, if they regrouped about uh, 15 men, in there and they managed to get the, the, the fast men together it could cause maybe a few problems for this wonderful time trial we're seeing at the front at the moment so back to the front group there's a man sitting on the back here Maseo number four from Belgium actually had a little look over his right shoulder and as we say that the second guy jean luc Bottolami maybe putting his hand in his pocket trying to get something to eat as I said that uh, just on cue yeah he's going to the middle pocket and usually what they have is the uh, the swanniers, the, uh, the, these are the guys who look after them, you know, rub their legs. They sort of make the sandwiches in the morning, you know, like six o'clock in the morning before they start. And it's all done in little packages. It could be little bits of bread with ham and cheese or maybe some little croissants or something nice and fruity. Just It's all done in a little packet, just big enough so it can go in your mouth, you know, so it's not going to, you know, stuff you. Just big enough, a little mouthful, and then get it down you. The interesting thing of this group, I'm... I'm a little drink there to wash it down with. And on cue number four, Yoan Museo looks so comfortable. This group, actually, certainly I've got on my notes that, uh, that they were out with about 80 kilometres to go. So, in fact, they, if they get through the finish, they've done about 50 miles out in the front because they've been really uh, hammering along there. I'm looking back here. Yes, they've certainly been out for something like about 80 kilometres uh, if they get the finish together. Over 50 miles, that's a hell of a long way for these three to work. A tremendous team time trial as such. And behind them, Zanini's still working away most of his... Uh, time is uh, being spent on the uh, on the front so there we are Zanini at the front and uh, Chamil right behind him and still Ballerini sitting in there with that three-man group down the road having uh, something like about uh, 50 miles in the lead that have done if they get to Roubaix those three men in front we're joined now with Paul Sherwin out on the road. A very interesting moment when Valerini set about uh, uh, splitting up that uh, six-man chasing group. Tremendous tactics today, Paul. What's your comments on them? Well, there's the tactics is that the Mape team are the strongest team in the race. They've had a man in every move that's been important. And this is quite a fantastic thing to see because they've all been right around Johan Museo. The strange thing, I think, at the moment is what seems to be happening with Ballerini. He's the man who really should be sitting at the back of that group, and he's trying to get clear to try and move up because he feels he's quite strong himself. And that is something I feel he should not be doing. He should leave it up to his three teammates at the front. Yeah, well, that's what we were thinking. 
hanging here too, Paul. Just, um, uh, we've been watching most of the front end of the race. Got any news from what's happening further back? Punctures, crashes, what's happening to your chaps at the moment? I mean, particularly for British well, viewers, actually, what's happening? there's been a general regrouping around the uh, 10th place in the race at the moment, and there are four of the Motorola riders in that group, and Sean Yates, unfortunately, is having a hard time. He's not one of those four riders. He's a little bit further down the main field at the moment, but George Hincapi and Frankie Dre are in there. As we speak, in fact, the leading group of three riders has just gone by me, David, at the side of the road, and I tell you what, Johan Museo looks absolutely fantastic. And you'll see in 1 minute and 42 seconds another group coming through then, Paul, but uh, uh, when you saw them go, just describe what it's like as they go past you, Paul, because I don't think people can understand what it's like with bikes battering over the, over the pavé. It's incredible, you know, David, you have to be as relaxed as possible because coming over the cobblestones, you haven't got to hold the handlebars very strong at all. In fact, you let the bike try and find its own way over the cobblestones and make sure that if you bounce and try and avoid any of the little potholes that appear so that you can float over them. The faster you go, in fact, the easier the cobblestones are. Well, we've just been uh, watching uh, uh, Chamil nearly come off on the corner, uh, Paul. We'll talk to you later on during the race. Thanks for that comment there, because we're watching a slow motion now. Chamil nearly grows into the spectators. The dust at the moment is causing all sorts of problems out there with these chaps. We wish your chap, uh, Hinkapi, the best of luck, and we'll watch this race with great interest. And back to Paul showing later on during the race. Thanks, Paul. So back to the leaders here, but I mean, just going back to that Chamil incident now, I think it, it's not like a concentration, just what happens is, is it's hard to, you know, for the viewers at home to say, but once you, if he will get trapped in those cobbles, there's nothing you can do, you try to turn it left, and all you can do is go straight on, but lucky enough, there was some crowd there to help him. So as we see, we're back to the leaders here, and as Paul Sherwin said from the, Mot the Motorola PR man, he couldn't understand the tactics of Ballerini. You've got three, not one man, not two, but three of your own teammates, all in the same group. There's no one else there to frighten them, and Ballerini is chasing. So we're going back, this is the, this is the chasing group that Ballerini is in. In the, in the light blue on the left-hand side, looking for the smoothest part is Zanini, the young Italian. And just in front of him, I think he's actually, I can't actually see it, it's possibly Ballerini. Look at the crowd. The crowd are lovely. It's a lovely, beautiful day. Look, Zanini's trying to find a nice smooth bit on the grass, but the crowd are there. They don't want to know. This is the left turn where Jamil had the trouble. Zanini's got round there. We're inside 40 kilometres ago, less than 25 miles left of racing. They've been averaging round about uh, uh, 40 uh, odd kilometres an hour, so we've probably got only an hour uh, left on our clocks here, which would mean we're going to have an early finish. This, this race is very, very fast indeed. I've just been wondering, if, uh, maybe the tactics of Ballerini, he wants to split this group and split this group to his left on his own, and then maybe when he's on his own, he's got so much strength, he thinks he can close the two-minute gap. Possibly that's the way of doing it, but I just, I'm not, not happy at all with his team tactics. A good picture here is Zanini but I, I can't work out roughly what's happened. I don't know if he's been dropped. It looks like the way the motorcycle camera's going up. We're going up now to see if Sanini's been dropped. As we go up, let's have a look what we're looking at here. We're looking at, uh, this is Ballerini. This is Ballerini on his own. So this is this is maybe what he wanted. This is what Ballerini wanted now. He wanted to try to close the gap for two minutes. Now this is a, all that's going to happen is if he closes the gap, there's going to be four Mappe guys there. So he's got one minute, 26 second gap to close. But I'm just wondering if the director might go up to um, the front three and say to ease off. I can't, I can't possibly think they will do. I wouldn't have thought that because Zanini was really going like a train and trying to get at them. And Chamil will recover. He's a very strong man indeed. But that shows the sheer strength of this man, Ballerini now who's determined to cut that gap at 1 minute uh, one minute 26 seconds the last time check we had it had been uh, much further than that he's, he's pulled about 20 seconds back we see regrouping here Muro, Ekimov, uh, Chamil and Home. but they look rather tired they don't seem to have any fire at the moment no they've had a hard day I mean everyone's had a hard day out there you know I mean obviously the weather conditions have been great but the, you know the conditions on the road are so hard and, and for Brian Holmes today and he, I mean he's a classy rider but he's his team leader is Olaf Luduk. He's looking around, looking around for the car, looking around for, to see what he should do. Well, uh, we've got four Mappes, well, three in the front, one closing up. If they finish first, second, third and fourth, that'd be absolutely amazing. Uh, we have had, in fact, the uh, Policia brothers finish first and second in the path, but I don't think I've ever seen four men from the same team finishing the Paris-Roubaix first, second, third and fourth. Eurosport will be bringing them more action after the break. Stay with us. Go. is here. Utilsat's powerful new television satellite for 13 degrees east. 
just point your dish to 30 degrees east to get over 30 exciting TV channels. Hotbird is channels in English with news and live financial updates 24 hours a day. Hotbird also has sport, movies, and all your favorite music. Hotbird, the best in satellite television. It's 1996. I've been waiting all my life. I'm not the only one. The beat of written drums. The river of kings flows golden. It's our golden jubilee. It's the 50th anniversary of our king's accession to the throne. To us, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It could also be yours. Inspirations, challenges, and rewards. Revive those feelings with the right tools. All under one name, the truly outdoor innovator. Husqvarna. It's easy. Husqvarna Forest and Garden Products. Sunfi. Or how to go from sun to shade without making a fuss. Sunfi. Automation for blinds and shutters. Leave it to Sunfi. What an incredible race we've got here with 33 kilometers to go. The three riders and Mappe on the front. The lead ran about one and a half minutes to two chasers, Zanini and Bortolami. And while we've been off there, we've seen an amazing sight that uh, Zanini got up to Bortolami and Bortolami signaled to get on his back wheel and they started to work together. Somehow, I don't know what this is all about at the moment, uh, Russell, that Bortolami is, is going to tow Zanini up to these three here. And he did it he just quite deliberately, didn't he? Yeah, well, all that kilometers to go and anything could still happen well, all, all I could, uh, we've got a front a, crew, a shot of the front group here with Botolami and uh, Taffy and Mazea what was happening was is, uh, Ballerini just had the little gap the gaps come down to 1 minute 12 what happened was Ballerini got a little gap on Zanini Zanini got across to him and then all of a sudden you didn't see it because the cameras were off but, but um, Ballerini was saying to Zanini come on let's work and I can't understand it all I can think of is hey I've got the idea this race is called the hell of the north so maybe Ballerini wants to be the devil whatever he's doing it, it's not the correct thing to do I'm sure that see the, the problem is the team director is going to be in the car is going to be behind these three, so he can't actually see what's going on. But if Ballerini gets up there with Zanini, there's going to be all, as they say, hell let loose. Well, there'll still be four to one anyway. But... No, but that's not the idea. The idea is, is at the moment we're safe. We've got look three three mappes there. Why bring someone else in? Maybe Zanini have an easy ride up there, and maybe a jump away. Well, this race has always been full of incidents over the years. The year after I said that Linton got uh, hit by a dog and finished 15 minutes down. They had two riders came in to finish. The finish of the rival it was a uh, great big uh, trumpeting as they swept into the track. The two riders were talking to each other, took a corner badly, and uh, one of the riders fell down. The other one took advantage and took a lead on it. So things could always go wrong right at the 11th hour, right at the very end of it all. 1.55 uh, is the gap to the third group, and only 1 minute and 14 seconds of the second. So the Closing up. Yes, yeah, so there's one minute 14 seconds. What happened was the motorbike came back with the big chalkboard on to tell the leading group that it was one minute 14. And uh, Yoram Musa had a little look decided to have a little rest and make the other two do a little bit of work but this is the chasing group I, I, I can't say I'm, I'm unhappy I'm really unhappy about this because look at Ballerini Ballerini is dragging the opposition rider up to the front group which he shouldn't be doing but you never know he's going to get up there and maybe Zanini could win the sprint and then I don't know what the director's going to say gap now down to one minute and four seconds coming over race radio now one minute four seconds so these two riders and the uh, three up in front this is amazing I said before I've never seen anything like this in Mappe dominate 
race like this one. I remember the Palicio brothers riding together for the same team, uh, finished first and second way back. That was what, uh, in the 1920s as such, uh, those two riders who first took the roads on the Paris Roubaix after the First World War when the route from Paris to Roubaix completely devastated by the war with twisted barbed wire potholes and bomb holes all over the place. Palicio brothers were strong in those days. They finished first and second, and we've now got uh, another team now dominating four men out of five at the front of this pack are from the Mappe team at the moment, just as Gavis rider popping up. Zanini, I think, is going to be the supplies one. He's, what, 27 years of age, so he's not exactly a stripling in this race, but you've got to be in the 30-plus to uh, to do well in this one. Ballerini, just on front now, is 31 years of age. Joe Mazeo's down the road is 30 years of age, so we've got some quite uh, old and experienced riders in this race at the moment, and if they uh, get back together, uh, Ballerini and uh, Zanini, and leave these four behind, then I don't know whether the team manager will be probably shaking his head somewhat, but I somehow don't think, Russell, with that gap at the moment back to these uh, uh, four riders, uh, who are now 155 back, they'd like to see the front of the race again, unless they all fall off. No, this is the third group here, and it, I mean, I'm sorry, as I say, Dennis, it's back to the front group again, and on the back is Museo, and all the time he's looking around. It looks like he's actually uh, just fixing his overshoe there, as it's the front group. Remember, these three riders are just over a minute ahead of two two riders who are chasing. One of them is Franco Ballerini, which is the teammate of the three ahead. And just on cue, we go back to the camera, and on the front here's Franco Ballerini. He shouldn't be chasing like this. He should. He's bringing an, he's bringing an opponent up. Camera shot again back to the third group, and I think um, I think their day's over as a chance of winning. I think. Uh, the gap is now less than uh, one minute uh, for the uh, three men in the lead to the two chasers. But now as Ekimov pulls over the side, looks like he's got a problem with his bike. Then uh, that is not in the four-man group. It's three with Ekimov stopping with his team car again. This race, which is full of disaster and uh, problems, has now claimed another victim, Ekimov, who should be able to get back if he's just a puncture. Yeah, as they say in France, Crevet's on. So we're looking back through the cars now to see. If it's a front wheel, it should be about 15 seconds, possibly 20 seconds for a rear wheel puncher. It all depends on how tight Ekimov was. And there we go, just on cue, Ekimov's. Whatever it was, if it's a puncher, he's got back in again. Crevet's on. So Ekimov, a former world champion. I think he's won 10 world titles on the track. A very, very classy road, but looks really elegant. New team this year, Robobank. They've already got a world champion, Anne van der Poel, won the cyclocross worlds. And as we say that, the three leaders, team car comes up to him, is giving information the whole time. Sometimes these team cars actually have little television sets in there, and if they're watching Eurosport, they realise that uh, Franco Ballerini is being the devil and chasing chasing the three teammates. So it's been confirmed on race radio that Ekimov uh, did have a puncture. That's what slowed him down now as uh, these two Italians and one Belgian start steamrolling away. Ballerini in that chasing group behind. He had something to prove there with 29 kilometres to go toward the finish when he was denied that uh, victory when Duke Lassell was giving the, uh, the results in that... Uh, Photo finish uh, just about to what uh, in 1993. Inside the final 30 kilometres, just uh, four lots of pave ahead of these riders, so it could be down to sprint finish behind uh, uh, amongst these three. One of the most tremendous of the outcome of this race with a, a big lead was that uh, by Coppi in 1950 when he won by nearly six minutes uh, he just took off he did after the feeding station Coppi and rode he had something to prove because his uh, brother uh, Cersei Coppi had uh, been only given an equal position after Mahé uh, the Frenchman had gone into the track the wrong way and in fact uh, Mahé had been leading as they got into Roubaix but was misdirected Cersei Coppi originally given the victory then Mahé was given the victory then in the end they gave it equal so Coppi in 1950 went out to prove the family was capable of winning the race and he won it by a clear oh, uh, what nearly six minutes or so so the days when riders could do big long lone rides we haven't seen that much recently the last man that I watched do it was uh, Chamil when he did uh, nearly 60 kilometers on home towards the end but it's much more tactical now and Chamil is a fellow just on the front there uh, in the lotto colors just behind him is uh, Moreau the ex champion of the world then Brian home in the in the white and pink color of the telecom and then and the uh, bluish colours of the Breslau team, and uh, then the white and orange colours, Yakimov for Rabobank, who's got back now. So Yakimov has now rejoined. Uh, actually, I suppose that the Telecom team are going to be a bit disappointed with uh, the performance of Ludwig. They're looking to him to finish in the, in the top ten today, but he seems to have had a very bad day indeed. They've him a special bike, actually, with a 
slightly higher bottom bracket. Uh, they they done it with uh, special tubing and such. They they made it in such a way that the uh, front suspension wasn't going to affect the, uh, the, the the top tube at all. They they built the bike with a smaller head on it, and they built a special uh, uh, brake, the sort of cyclocross cantilever brake on the back of the thing for Ludwig to ride today. But he's way off the pace at the moment. So all that work that went into building a special bike, no good if your legs don't uh, don't push the bike round. So it's uh, uh, home for the telecom team on the front this little group you see them there in front of you uh, home Ekimov, Chmiel, Moro and Malaysi the third group who are probably around about a couple of minutes down on the, the main group well so the, the, the uh, three leaders with wedged in between Ballerini and Zanini yeah, there's no, uh, what's the word, urgency in this group, I think. I mean, they're actually just rolling through. Just say, Chamil in the reds rolling through there, so is Moreau. They just, you know, they've realised that they've been trying and trying all day to close the gap on this MAPE train, as we see here. And it's just, it, you know, the legs just don't have it today. Maybe next week in Liège, Brest and Liège, maybe during the week on Wednesday and next week's flesh will on. But at the moment, it's just this MAPE train of Gianluca Bottolama, Joan Mizeo and uh, Taffy from Italy. Well, if your appetite's been whetted for cycling by watching uh, Eurosport's coverage this afternoon, if you're watching it live on the uh, Sunday afternoon of the Paris-Roubaix, it's a very fascinating race. They're still rolling hard, these Mappe riders here with 27 kilometres to go. Uh, the monthly cycling magazines have got some particularly good shots of old-fashioned black-and-white pictures of this race, which is now having its centenary. It's only the 94th issue today, but it's been there for 100 years. And the epic lines of the road, the lovely old pictures of this race. So these gentlemen here really are going on a classic course. They've been slightly altered over the years so they can find more pave as such, but I don't think, as I said before in this programme, probably bored me continually saying it, seen it dominated so much by one team uh, so strongly as we've seen this year. So Mappe, goodness knows what they're going to do for the rest of the year for an encore. So two minutes and 15 seconds a gap uh, on Radio Tour, back to the, uh, or, or the Paris-Roubaix radio, back to that little group we just spotted there, and still Ballerini and Zanini that we're looking at now are wedged in between and it looks the way they're going that gap could be coming down looking down the road i can see a car in the distance that could well be the uh, commissaire's car behind the leading group so Valerie is now getting a toe up to there there'll be some <laughs> surprised eyes i think when he gets up to these three at the front I don't think they'll be happy, um, especially you and Mizeo, I don't think they're going to be happy if uh, Ballerini comes across, you know, bring in someone else. All, as soon as they get across, all that Zanini's going to do is just sit on. There's no reason for him to uh, to do any work when it'll be actually four from the same team. So to say that again, it's good. They're, they're working still well. Botolami's going through. Taffy's going to pop in that gap. Mizeo's out the saddle trying to rest his legs, trying to save something just in case Ballerini comes across from Zanini and there needs to be a sprint at the end. Well, they're going to finish on the track. In the old days, they had a, a, a track here, which at one time, I think, uh, fell into disrepair. They're one minute, one second back to Ballerina Zanini. I don't know if they'll be in contention for the sprint when they get onto the track, but I was given a lovely book uh, when I came on this race a couple of years ago, showing all the wonderful old pictures of the of the track racing, uh, and uh, the crowd here are now waiting with bated breath to see if we're going to have a sprint finish at the end of the race. Just these three men now covering the last uh, four sections of Pave on the run in towards uh, Roubaix where a big crowd is gathering. You see all the way along the line here cheering this thing. Uh, cycling gets a tremendous uh, audience on the road and out there watching too. Thanks to all your viewers been supporting cycling on Eurosport. We're getting some tremendous figures from you. It's growing. With the Tour de France last year we had a, an increase of something like about 33% of viewers. So thanks for uh, tuning in and watching what's going on. This sport you can see appealing to all sorts of people, all shapes and sizes. No hooliganism, no drunkards, no lager louts about the place. People out enjoying themselves and they're clapping this tremendous performance because it's 25 kilometers to go in this race which uh, start this morning at uh, just after 10 o'clock Central European time covering 263 and a half kilometers that's 165 miles so you're watching an epic performance yet again domination by the Mappe and the crowd along the road appreciating uh, all that they're seeing they've heard it on their radios uh, many of them have got their portal TV sets alongside them as well to see the action they then 
stand on the side of the road and applaud everybody on two wheels they come through. Just finishing the Paris-Roubaix, so I'm just actually getting there. Whether you're first, 51st or 101st, doesn't matter to some rider. They want to say, I rode the Paris-Roubaix, I finished in this great classic race. And uh, they will just, later on, when they get into the showers, they'll all have stories to tell uh, for how the race evolved for them, because everybody uh, has a, a different story. It's everybody for himself, really, because there's no, there are few tactics. We see Mappe put the tactics in today, but really, to a large extent, it's every man for himself. And in this race last year, the conditions were somewhat similar. And uh, last year, Ballerini won that one. Chimil second, Museo in third spot, Yekimov fourth. So these are riders we've been seeing in the race so far uh, up in this, this front group. Uh, Sean Yates finished in 11th spot uh, last year in the... Uh, in the, in the Paris-Roubaix. So the Lions, the Giants of the road, still thundering on here inside 25 kilometres to go. An excellent shot here, the three leaders. Taffy from Italy just going through, just keeping it going. You know, Taffy is really, uh, these three is really the domestic, the super domestic. He knows... You know, he's got, he's, he's got no title to win. All he's going to do is just keep it churning. There's a good look there at Yerma He's got his Brico glasses on. They go around the right-hander. These three have done an excellent ride today. So probably just around about half an hour racing yet to go for these riders. Their tired legs still propelling their bikes towards Roubaix, where a big crowd is gathered in the uh, track to wait their arrival. This classic track over the years has seen some tremendous track racing and some exciting finishes as well. Are we going to see a sprint finish between these three? Well, in fact, that uh, one... Uh, I'm uh, oh, sorry, that, that one chasing group of uh, Ballerini and Zanini closed down the gap so that we have, in fact, uh, five men there. Well, there's still a lot to go for uh, inside the final 25 miles. There you saw the uh, banner on the side of the road, 25 k's to go. Zanini doing most of the work now. Ballerini did just exactly what he wanted to do. He split up that chasing group of about eight men down to the two chasers now, and they're heading in to try and catch that group. Uh, only about a minute between them and the leading three. We're going to take a short break, come back to us in just a couple of minutes. Frei sein. Grenzen durchbrechen. Heaven. Der neue Herrenduft von Parfum Chopin. Bevor Ihre Träume einfach zerplatzen, weil Sie zu lange warten müssen, sollten Sie den Citibank Sofortkredit nutzen. Denn wir entscheiden kompetent und deshalb schnell und präzise. Also probieren Sie den Citibank Sofortkredit doch einfach sofort aus. The city never sleeps. Citibank. Eddie, come on. The batteries that give toys a longer life celebrate Walt Disney Pictures' Toy Story, the film where toys really come to life. You can get free Toy Story gifts when you buy Energizer batteries. Energizer, giving toys a longer, longer life. Fakten, Fakten, Fakten und an die Leser denken. Über 4,4 Millionen Leser wöchentlich geben Fokus recht. Lesen auch Sie Nachrichten ohne Umwege. Fokus kommt schneller auf den Punkt. Überzeugen Sie sich selbst. Wählen Sie 0130-2125 und testen Sie Fokus 10 Wochen lang für nur 32 Mark. Als kleines Dankeschön erhalten Sie die Original Fokus Mini Datenbank. Rufen Sie jetzt an 0130-2125. Wir schicken Ihnen postwendend die Unterlagen zu. For the release of 
Casino featuring Robert De Niro, Sharon Stone, and Joe Pecci. Play and win a trip for two to Las Vegas and visit the Laguna Seca IndyCar Grand Prix. You can also win movie soundtrack CDs. To play and win, call the Eurosport hotline now. Good luck. Can't you see? Uh, to rejoin us, the gap 122 is growing between uh, Ballerina and Zazzini and those leading three, Bortolami, Mazzeo and Taffy. 2.45 back to the group containing Ekimov, Holm, Chamil, Moro and Malazi. So as we're inside the final 22, 23 kilometres, you can say it's all over by the shouting as far as that uh, uh, third group's concerned. The question mark is, can Frattini and Ballerini close that gap down? They're at 122 now. They got at one point uh, down to just on one minute. So they are, in fact, losing ground. This group here uh, at uh, 2.45, I think, can say they've got to sprint out for the lesser placings as such. There we are, just 21.9 kilometres left to go in this race. There's still some bumpy stuff ahead of them that disturb the balance, but we might see a sprint between these three, and that really will be uh, quite something unusual. As you are saying earlier on, uh, 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 Russell, that we did in the uh, Flesh for Lone Watch Argentines mob go first, second and third in that one, but at the moment this is just unbelievable, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's been a fantastic race. I mean, Mappe have just actually ripped them apart, as Paul Sherwin said. They had a man in every single break. And even from the beginning, Yoan Mazzeo was, you know, in the front group. But um, I think... Yeah Johan Mazzeo is really, you know, putting the authority down, being team captain because he's actually he's missing out turns and making the other two do, you know, do the big turns. But hey, he deserves it. I mean, you know, he's the one with the, the past results. He, you know, that's why they're making team leader. So it should be interesting. The sprint finish should be interesting on the track here. I'm looking forward to it actually. Well, I'm trying to just check out on my little notes here. They've they've come up through that section four there as to how we're going on the uh, on the time schedule because 40 kilometres per hour. I reckon we're still way over 40 kilometres per hour. The average speed when we first came on air at uh, what quarter past one or there about Central European time. Because that was a long time ago. Um, that uh, they were averaging 44 kilometres per hour at that particular time. So we're still in excess of 25 miles an hour. That's unbelievable for a race of this distance and over this sort of terrain. Well, I couldn't believe it. Where did we see him after? It was 20, is it 20 kilometres we saw him, didn't we, at the start? I couldn't believe how fast they were going there. And as I say that, the team car from Mappe comes up, the director's hanging out and just saying, look, he's just saying to uh, Jean-Luc Bottolami and to Taffy, look, just keep working, keep working. You know, we, before this started, we've been happy with a win. OK, if we get first or second, that's even better. First, second or third, it's just the icing on the cake. I bet you he didn't put his uh, suspension system on, on the sport mode. That Citroen XM has got a, a device you can actually harden the suspension. I had a couple of them. They're brilliant. And you could actually set the suspension like a sports car. I bet with a cobble stay, he didn't do that at all. It went, went on, the, on the softer side. Ah, well, little, talking, hey, wait, little, what's that little flick for? No, no, there's just a little chat in between each other. But talking about that, I mean, I was talking to uh, George, the mechanic of Motorola, and he was very, very happy. 20 k's to go then, and uh, as they go through that, those three riders, the last time check we had for them at 20 k's to go was the gap was uh, about one minute and uh, uh, 22 seconds back to Zanini and uh, the chase of Baller Ballerini, last year's victor, having had three punctures. You've just joined us on Eurosport. Good afternoon to you watching us live on this Sunday afternoon. Rather cold conditions this morning, a bit uh, uh, frosty and snowy. Uh, sorry, frosty out at uh, uh, Compiègne for the start. And the riders had 22 sections of pave to, uh, to take over. And it's had its effect because Ballerini managed to uh, get three punctures. They now go through the, the dust here. The course really absolutely diabolic at the moment. Uh, they're heading in toward the finish. Less than 20 k's to go. Yeah, the problem there was, I think it's uh, you have a Museo Battalami on the front there, and the motorcycles are so close, they're trying to get pictures, they're desperately trying to get pictures, that they're throwing up the extra dust and, I mean, you never know, this dust is going to come up in the, in the rider's eyes, you know, they close their eyes for a little bit, a minute or so, you know, sorry, a few seconds, catch a little gap, puncture or go down, they don't need this really, look, look the, the, I know the photographers want to get pictures, but they're getting so close. And they're watching the photographers there getting their pictures. You're watching on Eurosport to the final 20 kilometres of this race at the moment. You're watching on Sunday afternoon. I'll say to you, good afternoon to you. You'd imagine you're sucking all that dust in since they left at uh, uh, 10 o'clock this morning. They've been going for six hours now, or just quarter, yeah, just under six hours of racing they've had so far in their tired legs. And they, they are, in fact, coming 165 miles in all, 263 and a half kilometres. They've covered 22 sections of pave by the time they finished. We had an early 
lovely breakaway of Zabel uh, uh, and Debian and Museo, who you're wa watching in this group. He went with early breakaway as well with uh, Peters. They had a two-minute lead at one time, and it wasn't until they came up to the uh, forest of Arenberg when Zabel attacked off the front that it began to split, and then 20 men came up and joined them. All the top men were in that particular group, and from that reformed what you're seeing now on your screens. And the amazing thing was, at one time, we had four of the Mape riders up there, but Ballerini had the misfortune to puncture three times, and he dropped back uh, to the chasing group. Museo's had a couple of punctures. He's managed to stay in contention now. So it's been one of those races full of, uh, of uh, excitement right the way through. But the big thing to me, they've been travelling at over 25 miles an hour, despite the disgusting conditions you can see on your screen now. And the excellent thing is, is actually here on Eurosport, we actually saw the break. You know, they're all in one line in left-hand gutter, weren't they? And then actually, you know, the break just disappeared off the front. It was absolutely amazing. So it looks like the gap's gone up now to 140. I know it's going to be difficult for Ballerini. As we say, there's Ballerini and Zanini. And Zanelli. Zanelli. Zanini. Zanini. Hey, I was close. I was close. Sounds like a cheese. They were um, they're actually running the grass, but the gap's getting bigger and bigger. Well, of course, Ballerini's doing nothing to aid this one. And we have to remember that young Zanini here uh, actually got, well, young, he's 27 years of age, but uh, young man, he, got young up man. To, he got up to, to, to Ballerini, who was 31 years of age, very experienced rider, winner last year of this race. He, he got up to him, having had to chase his way pretty well on his own. So once he then got with that little group with Ekimov, and they started jumping around, once uh, Ballerini had opened the gap up again, Ballerini's left him to do all the work. So the poor lad's having to do a lot, a lot of chasing. He hasn't had many wheels to follow. They were up through the third third section of the pave now and as they exit out of zone three they've got um, uh, 19 kilometers or thereabouts uh, uh, to do uh, head on just maybe 18 kilometers left see we are 43 uh, kilometers per hour is the average speed so far this is phenomenal and the Joan Mizeo, the Belgium, riding for the Mappe team, as all these three riders are. Good close-up picture there of Taffy. What a super domestic he is. In the middle there, Jean-Luc Bottolari, another Italian. And remember, all these three riders are riding for Mappe GB. GB, the big supermarket chain based in Belgium. They've got 22 riders on the squad, and they've got some very, very good talent. Remember, back behind in the bunch is Tom Steeles, who won Gent World Cup during the week. They've also got Van der Broek. Young Van der Broek is only 22. He's been winning races. It looks like Museo just giving a little indication there. Just... Well, there they are, averaging now 43 kilometers per hour. That's 27 and a half miles an hour. What a race. So this Mappe machine is still blasting away at the front. Uh, they're inside round about uh, 17 kilometres to go from the finish and behind here, uh, Ballerini taking a tow behind uh, Zanini. It's all eyes at the moment. Eyes are on the uh, race going on, but uh, we've got so many eyes in this. The Italians really dominating this race so far at an average speed then of 43 kilometres per hour on this, the last but one section of the Pave, and a long one it is too. Now keep your fingers crossed. No more punctures will help for Mappe. They've had more than their fair share so far. Let's hope these three get set through, but this race is always full of incident. You never know what's going to happen next. The last but one section of the power, the penultimate one now, and they're all strung out. What a beautiful shot. So we shoot back again now to the chasing two. And look. And as I say that, we're going back to the front group. Mazeo is on the front, waving his hand. He's waving to the motorcycle to move on if he can a bit, because what happens is, as I said before, the motorcycle is just causing so much dust. The dust is getting into the mouth, getting into the back of the throat. It means you've got to take the extra drinks and things like that. But remember what Ballerini said. It takes him like about 10 days, 10 or 12 days to recover from this hard effort. It's just like... It's, it's like similar to riding a mountain bike race that was riding the road. It gets 1 minute 54 now back to those chasing two. So these three on the front are really starting to churn it out. But then what happens is as we get near to the end, even as we're sitting here in the stadium, as they approach the stadium, even in the last kilometre, they, the council put a special special lot of pavé on. They put pavé down, haven't they, David? Yes, uh, that's not actually shown on our official stretch of pavé. They're, they're, they're about 200 metres short of 50 kilometres. I think somebody went out and got a whole lot of pavé blocks and decided to, to surface the centre of 
the road. It just shows you how Roubaix here has, has uh, really taken this race to its heart over all these years because on that centre uh, uh, part of the road, they made it wide enough for the race. You see they're coming around here now on, on a, much like a cart track. They come down towards the stadium. They've relayed it with Pave right in the centre of the road. It would look like in the old days where a, a tram used to go up and down or two trams and a nice big green central evasion. They've now turned that all into Pave. Nice smooth Pave. And when you turn in towards the stadium, it's, it's very wide and then it stops and they turn sharp right in the stadium. But they further on down this long avenue with the, still the spot was a green central reservation, they've made another path, but it's only about uh, six feet wide. So they've, they've not bothered to take the wideness of the pave further on down. That's for walking further down. The top bit is for racing on. So amazing, the city council here... Uh, at uh, Roubaix have, de have made a very, very special piece of pave right down the centre road to bring the riders into the track at Roubaix where there's concrete track now bathed in sunshine, the flags are flying, the people enjoying themselves, they've been watching gymnastics in the centre of the auditorium, they've watched the mountain bikers come in here as well to finish their race and if a Belgian wins this one, a lot of Belgian supporters have come over because this is uh, right on the edge of the uh, Belgian uh, uh, border and so the hell of them here at the moment Two Italians, one Belgian in the lead, one, uh, two more Italians behind here. So at the moment, the uh, the Belgians are really outnumbered, aren't they? It's sort of uh, four to one at the moment. But still, keep your fingers crossed, and Mazzo, all your Belgians listening to our commentary here from myself or Paul Dore down there with Rudy Dannens, uh, the ex-world champion, helping out the bowl, Paul, today. May it be yet another Belgian victory. They've certainly been dominant in the, over the years. So good shot here, the chasing group. In the light blue on the front is Zanini. Just behind is Franco Ballerini. We go back to the leaders again on the front. As you can you can always tell Yerma's L from the other two because the other two have got the uh, the hairnets on and Yerma's L's got an um, actual Mappe cap just on the top. So Yerma's L's on the front, hands on the grip, looking for the, the on the top of the handlebars there, just looking for the best possible, smoothest ride he can. What a, what a great day he's had. As I say, everyone was surprised. He was in the early break with his uh, teammate, William, William, um, Peters. But um, what a day he's having. And look at this, look, you can just see it close up. Just have a look. The two on the left are trying to take the smoothest road. Museo's in the middle trying to find the, uh, the smoothest bit on the cobbles there. And he's also riding Museo, forgive me, with uh, just inside 15 kilometers to go if uh, you've been listening all the way through the program. He's riding on a special Colnago bicycle, which is made of carbon fiber. And there are only four, three of them in the race, actually. He had got one, and uh, Yekimov had got one, and Ballerini had got one. And they got slightly longer wheelbase so that the, uh, uh, the bike would absorb the, the, the banging on the, on the cobbles a little bit better. So Colnago giving them very special bicycles for this, this particular race. So Museo is on one on one of them and uh, the straight forks they're steel forks in fact the same as they have on the other steel bikes it's quite fascinating now after all the interest in uh, in telescopic forks the Paris but all these three rides out in front are on the fixed forks and further back course Ballerini is as well and I, I'm not quite sure about Frattini we have to look to see if he's on the on the on the shock absorber forks when we go back to look at him and hey, these Carnagos are nearly as good as rallies you know <laughs> but not quite well he's a very good build he's a very nice man indeed I met him at the uh, uh, the track down at Bordeaux when he made a very special bicycle for um, uh, for Rominger to attack the hour record and I'm fascinated how he still works with steel although he's made these carbon fiber bikes for uh, uh, Ballerini Museo and, and Ekimov he, he works in steel uh, and it's something he still prefers to do and it's interesting how over the years despite the new materials that come and go that uh, some of the top builders still prefer to use steel for their frames and particularly on this sort of course uh, with the batching they take many of the riders do like a steel frame which can be flexible as well as strong. Yeah, number four there, Yomas Hill had his hand up there for his, uh, what that indicates is for his team car and, and spot on team car comes up, director's hanging out, maybe for a fresh bottle, maybe just for some more information. Oh, yeah, what he's doing is he's, uh, he's uh, the team car's coming out to talk to Jean-Luc Bottolami just to say, look, keep driving, keep driving, we can win this, we can win this, keep it going. Mechanic there is having an easy day, look, he's waving. It wasn't an easy day, really, because they've had like two or three punches. We look at the time check there, look, two minutes, seven seconds back to Ballerini Zanini. So that looks like it's all over by the shouting. Those leading three could be contesting a sprint in Roubaix. The chase still those two men wedged between this little group you're looking at now and our leaders as such. Two minutes and seven seconds go back to uh, Ballerini and uh, Zanini. And further back now, this group here with Jamil on the front, the... 
man on the front at the moment, a previous victor in this race, now knows that his race is over, he's got to come in and just battle it out then for the, the sixth spot. Ekimov, who's had a misfortune, Punker is on his wheel at the moment. Moreau, who fought his way up, looking a bit uh, tired and weary, but still that uh, Mappe machine driving away at the front, very, very uh, hard into They haven't missed a beat all day, except when they've had a few mechanical problems. This is sheer domination. Goodness knows what's going to happen to the rest of the scene, because Mappe, with their three teams, they're able to have a classic lot of rides. We're looking at them now. Then they'll switch into the tour team as well, and they've got lots of lads standing by in the uh, on the sidelines in their, in their seat. I went out to see the Paru Bay uh, start a few days ago, and there was a Mappe team in that, and that's uh, their third team. So they've got tremendous, tremendous strength in depth, these people. Yeah, you're saying that, but also, I mean, obviously there are, there are other stronger teams like uh, Onsei who are not here today with, with uh, Jalabert, but also the way... But they could... don't ride the classics, you see. This That's Mappe right. team ride classics, they ride short uh, races, they, like, they ride big races, and you don't see Onsei in, in, in depth in the classics. Uh, they, they And the same thing with with, um, uh, with Bonesto. Mm. I mean, with all due respects, they put uh, Young Hunt in, a uh, bit of a chopping block, uh, uh, put Nassau in, they had to put a six-man team in this race, and we've not seen a Bonesto inside. They have the Tour of France in their eyes alone, but one team that rides and rides and rides is Mappe. Yeah. But saying that also, of course, you know, Chris Boardman, you know, from England, he's, he's got the form, it's unbelievable at the moment. Good, you know, good win the Criterium International, you know, he's been picking his races out and uh, he's riding really well. So hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, he'll have a, a good Tour de France. Oh, yeah, well, he's, he's more of a tour man. And obviously, again, we'll be looking towards that for, as they're, they're the number one team in France then to, to do well in that one. But the Italians still yet again, they come in year after year, they start their season uh, well back in October. They train one group of men for that. They train them to be good in the classics. They have other the riders coming through for later in the year, but many teams like Gan have only got like one squad. When you haven't got like 27 uh, riders on your team, you're having to ride them all, and they're just now inside 12 kilometres to go with his Mappe domination. They're sticking to it, says he, is standard joke, because Mappe are a, a company, a chemical company that make a DC that makes many other things, and they really have uh, stuck out the, the task today despite the problems. Ballerini back here must be very disappointed now, the man who's in the past one stage in the Kellogg's Tour of Britain, but uh, right now, having won it last year, he's going to have to drift in. He, I'm sure he'll be very, very disappointed indeed, but he's had to sacrifice his chances uh, for the three men up in front. Nice little ride then by Zanini here, who looks like he's coming into form just at the right time. Uh, Gavis again not looked upon as a, a classics uh, team as such. We're looking to see like Burson and so on in, in the tours yet to come. But nevertheless, there's Ballerini I'm talking how he won it uh, last year. He won the Grand Prix de la Mix. That was when the, that was also a, a World Cup round. It's now not on the calendar as such ballerini but they haven't put up the fact he also won a, a stage in the English uh, in the English tour some say I don't know they don't rate the old tour of Britain as it was but there you are yeah I think what ballerini is doing now is actually he should sit on like he should have been doing all day but actually because Zanini is actually a quite a quite fast sprinter he's been up there in stage racing before so these last 12 k's ballerini should just let him do the work and hopefully um, sorry ballerini should let um, Zanini do the work and ballerini hopefully can take the fifth place but you never know what's going on back to the third group here you know they're just uh, hoping to get round now with what 12 13 kilometers to go as you see uh, Francis Moore having a drink now Shamil in the red there has had a hard day so as they come off I mean all these riders have had a hard day but you know it, it always seems harder when you're not in the front group when you... so these riders are actually going for let's have a look three four five six place as we've got the front group here 10 k's to go now what's happening Museos what's Museo saying He's saying, look, come on, let's I work. I think he wants to share the work, you see, here, because actually, Bortolami, I was saying that Museo probably got a strong spin, but Bortolami beat um, Museo in the uh, Championship of Zurich, that's another World Cup round, uh, in 1994. Bortolami beat him in the sprint there and pushed him down to, into second place that year. So uh, that was the other... Uh, Museo was also second in the uh, in the Tour of Flanders to, to, to uh, Bugno. Here we are, we're running down now. I was mentioning the, the, uh, the success he's had so so far, and there's your little list of Hamsel Gold Race, Harry Tours. He's a tremendous uh, uh, man indeed, but uh, he, he lost out in 1994 to Bortolami in the Championship of Zurich, and that stopped him having uh, three of those on his success list. So Bortolami can certainly gallop quite a bit. 
Yeah, but he, let's have a look. We're going back to the slow motion here again. This is it. Look, Yamez on the front. It's really surprising. Look, he's, I think he's actually pointing to Taffy to say, look, you, go forward. It's, uh, I don't know if there's some, some problems going to start in the team. Remember, there's two Italians and there's one Belgian, so there could be problems. Look at the way he's moving his hands is to say, look, come on, let's get things together. And remember, whoever wins this, whoever wins this uh, classic, you know, I mean, it's like they say, it keeps him in a contract for at least two years. The money goes up and things like that. So are we going to have problems with... Are we going to have problems with Mappe? Well, the three leading men look like they might fight on the track uh, before long. Interesting then that uh, discussions going on with the team manager because it seems to be here as far as Taffy is concerned. He's not working and I think the team manager say, come on, keep the thing going. Although the, the gap back to the, the chasers is now getting nearer to two minutes and there's no way I think that Ballerini and Zanini can close that gap down. I think Taffy has been given his marching orders here. Taffy uh, is... Uh, I think he has been doing a lot of work earlier on. He may be a bit uh, quiet now. So he's in Musa saying, come on, get stuck in, you two. Let's keep this thing rolling. And uh, so uh, Taffy may be also saying, I'm a bit stuffed. He's not got the same sort of quality of success the other guy. I mean, Musa has won, uh, what, about 60 races, whereas Taffy is just about to, uh, what, go into double figures as such since he's been uh, been racing. He's much more a workhorse. And I wouldn't think normally, as we, as we go on to the last uh, stage of the set of the cobbles here, with just 1,700 metres of cobbles here ahead of them, that uh, Taffy is going to miss his turn unless he really is tired, but you never know with the tactics, he may have had a word with Bortel Army, and although they're in the same team you can never tell when you get two men of the same nation even around the same team, because uh, Museo uh, would like to, to, to get this one, they were Bortel Army win Canton Classic that was at the 90, uh, 94 when he beat uh, Museo in the sprint, so uh, Bortel Army is also a man who can go quickly towards the end, it could be between Bortel Army and Museo and Taffy, I don't know what, what part he's going to have to play in this one yeah, the Wing Canada Classic, which is, you know, obviously in Great Britain, put on by Sport for Television. Also brought us the Tour de France and brought us other, you know, the City Centre races, which are going on this year as well. I think they're going on uh, in July towards August. So it hit the three leaders again. They're coming to the left hand, the left hand bend. Big support there. Look at that. But are we going to have problems with this Mappe team towards the end? I mean, this could be exciting. But as I say that, Taffy's still on the front. I think maybe the director's board team telling him what to do. The hand goes up on Museo. Museo wants that team car up there. He wants to know what the position is. Or has he got a puncher? This could be problems. Oh, no, I'm looking around. It's a puncher. I think it's a puncher. Back wheel puncher for Johan Museo. Now, what are the two Italians going to do? Crevets on as they say in France. What's going to go on? Are they going to work it out together? Or, I'm sorry, we're going some pictures. Difficult with our pictures. But no, they're riding together. They're riding on either side of the road. They look like they're relaxed about the whole thing now and they're going to wait for Museo to come back or are they they're, they're chatting and they're sitting up yes they're going to wait for him they're going to wait for him now this they're is wait. this is excellent work here by the map 18 they realize who the team or are they it's like I don't know I'm not too sure if Taffy's if he's giving it 100% or not or that's, I shouldn't that, say 100% no, they're, rolling. they're still rolling they look like they're still rolling but, I, but they're not racing hard they're not, they're not, they're not actually on the, on, the, on the rivet at all but it's like um, I think it was Sean Yates said to me this morning to win this it's got to be 250% not 100% and as we come back now Shermer's out and he's got the bit between his teeth now he knows he's got to get back across is he chasing his two teammates or are they sitting up this is this is going to be the crunch time if Museo gets back maybe he's got the win but it's this race is not over yet his two teammates are either side of the road but I don't think they're actually going now they're, they're being fair well, now here team, comes Museo Museo's yeah. bringing it back across the team manager had just come up and had a word with him so I think that uh, he, he would already read the riot act to Taffy that he's got to help the thing and uh, Put in a bit of a turn of work on the front, so uh, right now I think they're going to come back together, the three of them, and set it out on, on the track when we get in uh, into Roubaix here, where this, this crowd's been watching it on this enormous screen. It's a fantastic screen, about the size of a house, an enormous great thing on the far side of the track, and everybody's sitting transfixed by what's happening. I'm sure the, the Belgians, uh, one or two of them, probably had a heart attack out there with too much beer and and uh, and, and pomp freak, which oh, which reminds me, my my freaks have gone terribly cold. I managed to get uh, most of them uh, damaged during the during the race so far. So I mean, his hand's gone back up again. Yeah, the hand goes up. I think that's, uh, that's Botolami now. Botolami's hand's gone up. He maybe he wants a drink for the director or not. Some information, I don't know. Let's have a look what's going on here. He looks like something to eat. Maybe he's... But the director's sports, I don't know. He's waving that hand now. I don't know what's going on. Maybe... I don't know if there is problems or not. I can't work it out. It's, it's, you know, you're never using this sort of situation. As they say, that Jürgen Museo's just punched. has gone to the front again. Botolami's got his hand up in second place. Italian. Taffy's sitting on there again. This is such a strange position to be in. Three dividers from the same team. But Museo is concentrating. Got his Brico glasses, poised on his nose there. 
round the left-hand corner, nice close-up there to the motorcycle at the saddle. Remember, the legs are hurting. Remember, it's been over 200 kilometres. Museo's been away from nearly the beginning. Well, with these three riders, I'm now coming in toward the outskirts of Roubaix. On this, the 100th uh, anniversary of the first race. There haven't actually been 100 editions of it because uh, what with wars and so on, they haven't run right the way through. It's only the 94th, only the 94th. I ask you, it just shows you how cycle race racing has been going on over all these years. But uh, on this, the 94th issue of the race, it looks like we're going to be uh, treated to a sprint at the end. They're chatting amongst themselves at the moment about this one. So. It's all down then. Can Can Bortolami put the old one-two across the uh, Museo did in the past? And Taffy, I think he's going to be pushed back into third. He would like to sprint this one out, but Taffy is not the uh, uh, the most uh, uh, rapid. He's just a workhorse, a very, very strong workhorse indeed. Yes, yeah, he comes down to just over five kilometres ago, so they're just, you know, just outside the stadium, just approaching it. And there's a lot of conversation going on between these riders because everybody, you know, obviously they want to win. Looks like Museo is starting to drift to the back. He's the, he's the big sprinter, but don't forget, Jean-Luc bottolami has got a sprint on him. And if them two look at each other, then Taffy's going to escape. But they're all in the same team. What has the director sportive said? Who's going to win this one? Museo's looking comfortable. Look at that, look. He's really concentrating. He had bad luck last week in Tour of Flanders. He said he was feeling good. He had problems with his wheels. Well, and actually this morning when I when I looked at him, actually, he was unshaven, so maybe he's got that hungry look like a boxer. Yeah, I'm interested also then, as we're watching what I call people on more as conventional bikes coming, because I remember the time when Ballerini was riding on a, a bike with suspension front and rear and had problems at the back end of it. Or they've gone back to traditional bicycles here, even though the uh, one of uh, Bozea is made of carbon fibre. And so it's uh, quite fascinating how technology goes one way, then the other, but it's still the ride that makes all the difference. And poor Taffy, by the way, looking back in some of his, his records, they say he hasn't, he's only had about nine successes so far as a pro. He didn't win a damn thing last year at all. He finished 14th in the Paris-Roubaix last year, Taffy, and they're just sending him out again. He's got to do all the, all the flogging, all the hard work and what have you. So uh, the poor chaps then is going to be, there we are, with uh, Taffy, Bortolami and Museo. It's probably still going to be the workhorse for Bortolami and Museo to work it out amongst themselves. Yeah, Taffy is just a super domestic, but as I say that, we're looking at uh, Museo's bike now. He's, he's, he's lost his bottles. He's got rid of his bottles just for the extra lightness, even though he's sprinting against teammates he's got to get this right and these are the chasing two then they're not going to close it back up that was uh, Ballerini and uh, Z Z Zanini back to the third group on the road remember they're over two minutes back but the action is all with the front group we've got three riders all from the same team we've got Taffy the Italian we've got uh, Bottolami the Italian we've got Museo the big favourite this is the chasing group of Ekimov, Holmes, Jamil Francis Moreau the ex-world champion the young Italian is on the back as well Remember, they're going for uh, sixth place at the moment. And here's the front group again, on the front there. That's Taffy, second place looking cool and comfortable. Yo Mizeo, he's the one without the, uh, without the yellow hat or the green, the green cask. So, Mizeo, undoubtedly the uh, best rider in this group for, as regards uh, performances over the years. I say he's had over 50 victories now as a professional, Johan Mazzeo. Uh, in fact, it was 63 coming into this season, if my calculation is correct. Finished third in the Paris-Roubaix last year, did uh, Johan Mazzeo. He had, in fact, 11 victories last year compared with his two breakaway compatriots, the uh, Bortolami only having one victory, which is in the prologue of the uh, Tour du DuPont. And uh, uh, Taffy had no successes at all last year, uh, so Taffy finishing in uh, 14th place in the Paris Bay last year, so what's going to happen this time round? There again we saw Jan Mazzeo putting his hand up, there's obviously some sort of problems here, he keeps putting his hand up, it's not problems with his bike, it's probably problems with the teams, because I think it's going to be between him and Jean-Luc Bottolami. Well he certainly changed his bike, because his number's not on that one, although again it looks like a carbon fibre one from uh, Mr Conago, so without the number on the bike, it says that um, uh, it's uh, really uh, probably a change of bike that he's had at the moment, and they're heading in now, they're inside the last five kilometres to go, massive crowd here at the stadium, in fact the local people are saying they've never seen so many people and I felt the same thing too as we came along the course this morning and uh, at the start and so on we've seen an enormous great crowd of Brits out there we, they come across in coaches uh, to watch the event of I've even seen my good friend Phil Liggett in his uh, uh, Renault his Spass with a, a lot of Americans all been out riding their bicycles and uh, they were out there too
here, but a tremendous crowd, good day for it, and the crowd here, they'll absolutely go bananas because there's so many people, I think, from Belgium here. If, if, if uh, Rousseau gets this one, I feel this stadium will erupt. It's going to be a great finish. And don't forget, Pat Ligger was here as well because she came up to me and she said, Russell, I've never, look, never seen you looking so fit, so there you go. <laughs> that's what a day off for, that's what day off does for you. If you you'd, I've done what I said and ridden the last uh, uh, 40 kilometres today, you wouldn't have found it, but just with two and a half kilometres to go now, are they going to wait till they get on the track? When they come out on the track, the entrance to the track is on the far side from the finish line. They do a complete uh, uh, run through the finish line first time and come round and do one full lap. So a lap and a half for the riders uh, on the run in uh, toward the finish now. They'll be on this cobbles in the centre of the road. And Museo's missed, 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 missing turns all the time. And look at him, he's out of saddle, he's flexing his legs. He's trying to get that fresh blood back into the legs. There's Taffy. Taffy knows he's got third place. No way is he going to win. But there is a possibility of the guy in the front, Jean-Luc Botolami, if he gets on the wheel of uh, Museo, there's possibly a chance of him winning. But here we go, we're coming down to the last two Ks now. But it looks like Jean-Luc Botolami is doing longer turns the whole time, so maybe he's going to be Museo, the team leader. Who knows? We're coming very closer and closer. Taffy's trying to come through, but Botolami's doing a, a really hard turn. But here comes Taffy, giving it... He's big on that 53 ring, he's down there on the 13, he's really churning. But look at Museo, he's out of saddle, look at it. Side to side, flexing the legs, he's looking comfortable, just like a sprinter. There he is, shaking his legs a little bit. We're coming closer and closer. This is the big win he wanted, remember. Last week he blew it, wasn't his fault, he had bite problems or maybe problems in the legs. They're doing the left turn here, we're getting closer and closer. And this is the fresh cobbles that David and I were talking about this morning. They couldn't quite make 50 kilometres, so they've thrown in some 300 metres of fresh cobbles. Remember, they're going to do 300 metres here, and then they're going to turn right. But what's happening here? Johan Museo starting to make a move, or is he? Or is it me just getting excited? I think they've got a right-hand turn, because we're seeing the stadium. They're going to come onto the stadium any minute, and I'm going to hand you over to David. One kilometre to go then. Museo looking for his uh, first victory in this race. The last Belden to win the race was Eddie Plank got in 1990. The whole of the crowd here is going absolutely banana. We've got Duca Lassell has come alongside our commentary point now. He must be pleased with what he's seeing, with a big turnout of people here. But it's not a French in the leading group, it's just been dominated by the Italians though, as up the front then, that man Mazzeo is leading out at the moment, Mazzeo is on the front, swinging the side of the stadium, erupts as he hits the, uh, the concrete track and comes into our side at the finish point, young uh, Russell Williams here is getting so excited, he's a track man, Bill Russell, 20 odd times the British champion on the track and now he's enjoying this with Mazzeo on the front, is that the best place to be? Surely not, but I'm, is a good sprinter Russell. I'm just going to come in quickly, this could be a mistake here for Mazzeo because he got Botolami right as well. Taffy's giving it a big arm, but this could be a mistake for Museo because Botolami has got the perfect idea. They're on the last lap. This could be it. Botolami's looking around, realizes it could be between Botolami and Museo. Museo so, looks cool and collect. I'll leave it to you. Taffy says, Go on, you two. I don't uh, sprint. I've done my work. I've done my share. But it almost looks like a triumphant lap of honor for Museo. A past World Cup for winner overall. And now they start to come down the back straight and they look through here. They're almost letting it roll away, but you can never tell. I say Botolami has beaten it, but now they're putting the hand up. Look at this. This is a complete lap of honor. One, two, and three by the Mappe team. I've never seen anything like this before in this race or in a classic of this statue before. The 100th anniversary of the Paris-Roubaix will be celebrated all the way throughout Italy and throughout Belgium. One, two, and three. Mappe triumph with Museo first across the line. Bortolami alongside him, tap into third spot. That was a dominant piece of bike racing, the like of which I've not seen before. Yes, they challenged one, two, and three for the same team in the Fresh Fallon last year, but this was something else. It was over the hardest course in the world with more than their fair share of problems. The punctures that Museo had, the punctures that Ballerini had, they triumphed against adversity, and Museo rides home the victor, the 1996 Paris Bay. And that's just how a team should be. Look at that. They realised the team leader, Jean Museo, he had hard luck last week. And look at that. One, two, three for Mappe. Museo saying, come on, boys, come together. Look at that. Mappe's on the front. Mappe won. That's all that matters. Doesn't matter who wins. And if we come back to the, the fourth and fifth place, can Ballerini possibly get fourth place? Remember, Zanini, the, the Italian from GS, is a fast sprinter, but um, Ballerini's been making him do the work. This is a fresh lot of cobbles that we saw this morning they put in to make it 50 kilometres of cobbles. So Zanini, the uh, GS rider, he's got his hands out on the grip for him. They come into the track. They do a lap and a half. It looks like he's moving his arm, but Ballerini's not going to come through. Now, this is going to be a real sprint. Before, was just, oh, I can't say it was playing because, obviously, they did the hard work and got the gap, and the team captain won. 
but well, here we go. Way back in 1978, 79 and 80, Moser did the triple. The great Italian had three consecutive uh, wins on the trot and showed that Italy was in with a shout in this race. They've done well over the years. I said about Coppi dominating it in 1950, winning by six minutes. But the Italian uh, team now, the Mappe GB team, remember GB is also sponsored by the uh, supermarket group from Belgium. So many Belgians here at the moment. It's been a real festival to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the uh, Paris-Roubaix. This great classic race in today, and they're covering 263 kilometres, and Frattini's on the front, searching for the fourth place, and uh, Ballerini Lascher's victor is being towed round after three punctures. What an unfortunate day for him. So Zanini's on the front. I, I know he's just looked under his arm. He's trying to keep the gear down low. He's going to be looking over his shoulder the whole time. Ballerini is just there. Remember, to go for fourth place. There's a little look there at the corner of his eye. Maybe he's going to wait for Ballerini to make the jump or not. There he goes. He's looking again, looking just like a sprinter. Going down the back straight. There he is, looking over his right shoulder. Ballerini's going. They're going for fourth and fifth now. They're side by side. Canton into the sprinter. Hold him off. Ballerini squeezing down. This is great. Look at this. Squeezing again. Shoulders rubbing. This is for fourth and fifth place. Ballerini's having trouble. Zanini's coming through. And it looks like Ballerini might get it. He's powering down here. He's looking to take something out of this one, but no, Fratini, uh, Zanini gets it to take the fourth spot. Zanini, who was 20th last year in the uh, uh, Paris-Roubaix, 20th man moves into fourth, just off the podium. The man who won last year then just did what he could, but he dropped back into fifth. What a great day, though, for Mappe. Then one, two, three, and five. The heaving of, of the press down there want their pictures, and my goodness, the papers tomorrow are going to be full of this lot. What a way to celebrate the Paris Bay, this is the 94th issue. Sorry if you're watching some replays going backwards here, but that's Zanini moving up safe and 20th to uh, uh, fourth spot this year. Last year's victor with three punctures. He looked so strong, really, didn't he, Russell? He had to play the team part. I'm sure that if he'd been up there uh, before, it could be in with that sprint. But what a disappointment. The man who went Duke Lassell beat him by just a tie, which said he'd never come again and ride the Paris-Roubaix. He came back and won it last year and not only that, he's shown today his, his total dedication to the team. Yeah, that was bike racing its best, but hey, that's, just, that's the way the queen of the, you know, the Paris-Roubaix goes. Sometimes you have luck, sometimes you have bad luck. Three punches as you go back to the, yet the other chasing group. Now, this is the third group on the road. Now, they're going for, look, three, they're going for sixth place. So, remember, they're going to take the right hand. And this. that's the centre section of the road we just spoke about. A lovely helicopter shot there, showing how they widen the road, put it, some cobbles on it before they turn sharp ride, the place where in fact uh, some years ago one of the riders was actually stopped by a policeman in the days when you had to have li uh, a license on your bike and asked to show the license, that turned into the track has had so many problems over the years, riders being misdirected, riders falling off but let's hope they all make it round now as uh, the uh, previous world champion for the pursuit uh, uh, on the front at the moment, Francis Camaro uh, leads out another ex-world pursuit champion and that's Ekimov too they'll know his way around, their way around this sort of track so we, these two are going to be probably sorted out amongst themselves. And also in fourth place Brian Holmes, the rider for Telecom, he ride, he's ridden in the Copenhagen Six, but it's Francis Moreau trying to hold the bottom of the track as he passed the balloon. So Francis Moreau, the ex-world pursuit champion, followed by Ekimov. Don't forget Chamil's a fast sprinter there. We've got the young Italian, but don't forget we've got Brian Holmes. They're here, they're This is great fun. Remember they're going for sixth place here. Moreau's starting to pick it up. Ekimov's on a good wheel. The young Italian's got his hands in the drops. He's got to get him down low. He's got to really sort of dig deep. But it's Brian Holmes going to come off the top. My money's on Ekimov here. Ekimov's in a good position. The young Italian's making the move. Is he going to squeeze Ekim off in it. Ekim off had a hard day. The young Italian's going. Chamil's there. So Malaysia's now got it. Chamil, who used to live in Roubaix, is into second spot behind. Can uh, Ekimov come sweeping over the top? Doesn't look like it. Malaysia on the front. And Chamil, the extra man who lived in Roubaix, took this uh, race a couple of years ago. He's going to stamp his way into sixth spot on the line then. He takes it there. He was, what, second last year was uh, Chamil. Winner in 1994. Has to be satisfied now, but the speed then up there, 43.32 kilometres per hour. Six hours and five minutes of racing for this uh, race, which today uh, covered 263 uh, uh, kilometres and a previous victory having to be in six spot but my goodness how he tried all day well the 
remnants of this uh, group. We had 27 teams start to ride us, uh, something uh, thick end of a couple hundred riders this morning. There they are on that cobble stretch in the centre of the road, specially prepared to sort them out before they come into the, the track here. And uh, looks like Yester Skibby here at the moment, or is it not? Hang on, we'll chest this one as he goes through. The riders coming in all over the place. Mappe have got yet another man in there too. That is absolutely outrageous performance by the Mappe team. Uh, as round they go, in fact, it's Tristan Hoffman from the uh, from the uh, TVM team. As the lads when they go and interview them, they say, well, at least with the with the best good-looking team in the race, they've got some good-looking chaps in there as well. But Tristan Hoffman, it is then uh, coming through, and I think that might be Peters. They just. Uh, Picking up another group of riders that's, that's, that's come on into the, the track. And they're all they're coming thick and fast all over the place at the moment. Yeah, I think that's Peter's edge. He's jumped past Christian Hoffman. I remember the group behind him, a lap down on, on uh, Christian Hoffman. But in between that, there's another three riders going round. And it's a Motorola ride. It looks like it could be Gorda Fraser, Frank Andrea. I'm not too sure going down the back straight. There's so many riders on the track now. So remember, this group is, is a lap down on the others. Well, Hinkapi was in that group at one time. And so uh, he's a very good sprinter indeed. But of course, they're sprinting for all the lesser places. The prizes go down, I think, about 30th overall. And they're all coming through left, right, and centre at the moment. And uh, something great sprint down the back. <laughs> we're, we're looking out for our commentary point. They're coming through all over the place right now. Just seen Frankie Andro finish uh, on his own in the midst of a little group there from Motorola team, the American. And uh, let's see, a something great sprint here as well. Just rolling up across the line then. That's a George Hincapie. I thought it was on a 54 Motorola, but his teammates just about beat him into it. And uh, been trying to spot what's happened to Sean Yeska. Oh, Pippa uh, and uh, Liam will be looking out for Dad. Maybe they spotted him. I'm sorry, I, quite, I couldn't quite pick him out in that bunch. Jan Mazzeo, victor of the Paris-Roubaix, got his lump of rock to take home. Belgians are absolutely delighted with that one, and he must be too, after being uh, submerged into third spot in the Tour of Flanders last week. He had a buckle wheel which affected him on the climb uh, up toward the back end of the Tour of Flanders last week. Well, we weren't quite sure whether it was his form or his bike that uh, let him down last week, but this week he showed convincing superior form to take the toughest bike race, really, the toughest single day race, but we've never seen celebrations like that before at the end of one of the big races in the world, which had everybody's knees cre creaking, just a mere thought of riding Paris-Roubaix, frightens most people, what a day these boys have had today.